Alrighty folks, this is Lurch from Ireland Gaming and welcome back to another episode of From the Depths. I'm actually here on my old test platform because I have these um, little grids set up for armor piercing rounds just to test them out. Because a few people have been asking how to use penetration depth fuses correctly. So I put together this little mini tutorial type thing to help you guys along. Before you even start designing pen depth fuses, you first have to understand how the kinetic damage and the AP systems work. Now, here in this fella is a rather nasty 200mm example shell. As you can see, the kinetic damage is about 5.4 thousand, with an AP of 10. Now, when you fire this shell at a line of metal beams, the first thing it does when it connects to the when it connects to the very first beam is it calculates the damage done to that block. Now, in the case of a metal beam, it is it has 10 armor and 1100 HP. Now with the AP mechanics, having 10 AP means that we do 50% damage to the metal beam. And we need to double that to 20 if we want to get full armor penetration and do that, that full like 1100 damage. Wood, on the other hand, only has 3 armor. So in that case you would only need 6 AP to do full damage. Now, on a metal beam, it's going to take us 2.2 thousand kinetic damage to destroy the beam with our 10 AP, right? So we can now deduct this from our total kinetic damage of 5.4, leaving us with 3.2 thousand kinetic damage to pass on to the next block. I'll just shoot this here for you. Now, the AP isn't reduced by concurrent targets, so our AP remains at 10. But if we connect with another metal beam, it will take another 2.2 thousand damage off our total, leaving us with 1 thousand kinetic damage left on the shell. We now have less than the HP value of a metal beam left, so if the shell connects with another beam after that, it will detonate, regardless of your fuse settings. This is because the kinetic damage has run out. So, for this example shell, we have shown that we can fully pass through two metal beams with math, before detonating the shell on the third one. So I have this set up here and let's uh, just hit R to turn off repairs. Let's shoot this and this is a very 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 thick metal beam thingy. And we have went through one, two, three and it's hit here and exploded. Now the reason this one is missing is because of the actual explosion damage. It's passed through to the next one. So that's passed through onto the next uh, thing it's done a bit of damage to all of these blocks around it and yeah that's that's how that works all right so now we know we can penetrate through at least two metal beams that's good so we can now configure your penetration depth fuse using these parameters now a very important note about uh, about this depth distance uh, the penetration depth attained before the shell explodes if the shell runs out of kinetic damage before the depth it will explode automatically right we've covered that already but this depth is not in meters of distance. It is the depth of um, blocks that it will pass through. So this doesn't count air blocks. This is a very, very important distinction to make. So because I have this set up to five, I have another little test set up here. And you'll see. Now this is five layers thick, this little wooden section. So if this was based on meters, this is four. So it should blow up here if it's based on meters, like actual distance. But if we take the shell and go BANG! Lovely little block confetti there. You'll see it's actually detonated right in the middle of the fifth one. So that means that it is definitely based on the actual penetration depth of blocks. That's really, really important. Now another thing that is highly advisable to do is set a timed detonation. If you go in here, you've got a first surface time, and this is the time after it penetrates the first surface that it will go off. If your shell is going at 351 meters per second, it's going to go about a kilometer in three seconds. So that, that means that it's going to go in half a second, it'll go about 500 meters, which is way more than we need. And we want it to slow way the hell down. So. This should really be something closer to, you know, about 0.5 or something, or 0.05. Because at 350 meters per second, it can still, still travel quite far in that amount of time. And this prevents it going out the other side of the target and just being completely wasted. 
as long as you've got a first surface time set, you should be able to, like, at least if you're shooting at lighter armoured targets, not just completely waste your shells going out the other end. Now, obviously, if you're fighting against lesser armoured targets, your penetration shells are going to go through many more blocks. And with the variance in trajectories and where it's going to hit on the target and even different targets, it's next, impo next to impossible to get a guaranteed explosion exactly at the depth that you want every single time. It, like I said, depends entirely on the target and more importantly the, configura uh, the configuration of blocks the shell is actually going through. But I do hope this little tutorial shines a bit of light onto how, uh, how to configure your depth fuses and for maximum effectiveness. They can be a little bit fiddly to get it configured right, but they can be absolutely devastating with the right shell. I do hope you enjoyed the video. Any likes, subs or comments are really, really awesome. I love hearing from you guys. I read every single comment and I do my very best to reply to all of them. As always, take it handy and have a bloody good day.